In this corner, yeah, we've yeah. got the master of mastication. Um, I'm sorry. When I first started this, I was having fun. It was uh, actually kind of fun to go into uh, the things that um, uh, Dr. Pete, D Dr. Jordan Peterson was saying, and critique them, uh, pick out errors. But now I'm barely three minutes into his uh, talk, and already I've spent an hour and a half just picking word after word after word, not even complete sentences, but like he says, um, so many errors per sentence. It's just mind-boggling, and which is kind of a lesson for us. Always watch out what people say about other people, because very often they're telling on themselves, and such is the case with uh, Dr. Pete here. Um, in this discussion, in this video, I'm going to look at what Dr. Pete says about hierarchies and human society. But first, let's take a look at what he actually says, and then I will discuss it. And so, and that, that is implicit in some sense in Marx, Marx's thinking, because of course Marx believed that in a capitalist society, capital would accumulate in the hands of fewer and fewer people, and that actually is in keeping with the nature of hierarchical organizations. Now, the problem with that isn't so much the fact of so there's, the, there's accuracy in the accusation that that is an eternal form of motivation for struggle, but it's an underestimation of the seriousness of the problem because it attributes it to the structure of human societies rather than the deeper reality of the existence of hierarchical structures per se, which, as they also characterize the animal kingdom to a large degree, are clearly not only human constructions. We're going to get into um, this in just a moment, but first, let me just ask you uh, very quickly, very briefly, to uh, hit the, um, the like and the subscribe buttons. These are very important. If not for you, then for me. Okay. <laughs> Do an old man a favor. Just hit the buttons. Uh, but besides that, at the end of this video, I don't like to put it in the middle. I tried that, and it seems to be a little awkward. But at the end of the video, you'll see a, an informational about Skillshare, um, and I urge you to try it out. You can try it out for free, which always uh, uh, intrigues me, is, is, is my big word. Oh, it's for free. So sign up for it for free, and if you don't like it, you can quit. But what it is, is Skillshare is an online educational venue, and it's not your, it's not your, um, your parents' or your grandparents' education. Sit in class and, oh, i got to listen to a professor talk about uh, English grammar again. No, it's fun stuff. It's like uh, in music or the arts, uh, computer technology, um, uh, maybe a little bit of writing, if that's what you want to do, but all sorts of uh, e e exciting informational stuff. So stay around to the end and check that out. But now we'll go back to my discussion of Dr. Pete. So here we have an example of um, one of the critiques of Dr. Pete in that he uh, creates convolutions to disguise the simplicity of his mind, that is, needless complexities that seem to be complex, but they're really not. They're really somewhat simple-minded. So for instance, here he says it's not a social class. It's hierarchy. Well, those are kind of the same thing, except, except that hierarchy is more general than social class. Now, one of the first rules of writing, of thinking, speaking, of course, is that you should be as specific as possible. So hierarchy is a very general form of classification, and I'll go into exactly what hierarchy is in just a moment. But Marx refers to social class, which is a more specific form of hierarchy. And even there, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about Dr. Pete making a distinction without a difference, is what it's called. So it's as if somebody says, that's a golden retriever, and you say, that's not a golden retriever, that's a dog. Well, you see, that's the same thing, except dog is much more general. 
or it's not torture, it's just enhanced interrogation. <laughs> or I didn't lie, I just presented alternative facts. These are just complexities and convolutions meant to disguise reality or meant to, I don't know, make yourself feel better, make yourself appear to be smarter, more intelligent than you actually are. One of the things to go back to, one of the first things to look at here, is that Dr. Pete admits that Marx is right. <laughs> but he blames hierarchy, not social class. But of course, as I said, social class is a form of hierarchy. And Marx was talking about a very particular hierarchy or social class structure in his day. You see, so Marx was referring to a very particular situation in his age. So what are hierarchies? Let's take a look at hierarchies. And we'll see why Dr. Pete's insistence that it's the nature of hierarchy just doesn't hold water. So hierarchy is a system or organization in which people or groups are ranked one above another according to status or authority. Okay, so that's one definition. But that's just one definition. And we'll see in just a moment that that's not the only definition that we can have. And so here we have a picture of a kind of a classic organizational chart. You've got the boss at the top and then, you know, the you know, maybe the vice presidents rank below and then the assistant vice presidents and then, you know, workers and whatnot, and, you know, rank below that. That's a hierarchy. That is one hierarchical structure. But immediately we get into complications because here we have a hierarchy of the U.S. government. And you see right here, the U.S. government, the government of the United States is set forth by the Constitution, which is the supreme authority, actually has three heads of government. Very often don't think about that because the president gets all the, all the credit, all the blame, okay? all, all the honor of being the head of state, but they're co-equal branches of government. So you have a tripartite hierarchy that is three heads of government. You know, the legislature that makes the laws, the executive that carries out the laws, and the judicial branch that um, uh, interprets the laws. So already you have a hierarchy that's quite a bit different from the original one that we looked at. And you can have what's called a taxonomic hierarchy. And this is how um, we classify uh, animals. So you have the animal kingdom, all living animals, and not plants, okay, but animals. And uh, you have a kingdom, then you have the phylum, and here uh, we see the chordata, that is the uh, animals with uh, spines, with vertebrates. And then you have mammalia, the mammals. You see, these are different from um, you know, spiders, uh, arachnids, and uh, reptiles, and fish. Okay, uh, you have the, uh, the order, you know, the carnivora, you know, those that uh, eat meat. And then you have a family, uh, the uh, Ursidae, you know, the broad category of bears. And then you have the uh, uh, smaller genus, the Ursus, the black bear and the grizzly bear. And then finally you get down to the species. So this is a taxonomic hierarchy. This is quite a bit different from the hierarchy that uh, Dr. Pete is specifying. See? Um, this is why hierarchy is not a good term to be used in the way that Marx is using it. And it's not good uh, thinking on Dr. Pete's part to be insisting that the term that should be used is hierarchy. Teams in a football league, you know, this is a hierarchy. Okay, uh, you know, the top 25 teams. Well, here I just list um, uh, five, okay, uh, from a recent uh, uh, season of uh, college football in the United States. You can have a hierarchy of favorite colors. This doesn't mean that one's more important than another, okay? You have nested hierarchies, okay? And here you don't even have one above another. I mean, they're nested one inside another. There's, these are the famous uh, babushka dolls, you know, the Russian babushka dolls. Very cute little toys, you know, one, one nested inside another. Neither one is better or certainly not more powerful. 
Okay, a family tree is a hierarchy. See, so you have all different kinds of hierarchies. And so to say that Marx is really talking about hierarchies and it's the nature of hierarchy to do one thing or another is completely erroneous. And you have a hierarchy that Dr. Pete should be very familiar with. And this is Maslow's, a psychologist, hierarchy of needs. Uh, you start off with physiological needs and then safety needs and the need for love and belonging, uh, the need for esteem, and finally the need for self-actualization. And this is the psychiatrist, uh, um, uh, uh, Maslow, who constructed this, this pyramid, if you will, this hierarchy of needs, uh, supposedly human beings satisfy physiological needs, that is physical needs, such as, you know, need for food, need for warmth and shelter. Uh, and then we satisfy our needs for safety. You know, we want not to be attacked, not to be killed. Uh, and then we satisfy our needs for love and belonging. And then for esteem, that is status within the group. And then finally, self-actualization. And this has to do with our creation of art or our... Uh, uh, spiritual needs. But even here, you can see that, well, one, one is not more important than the other necessarily. And it's possible to satisfy several of them at the same time. So at the same time that you're looking for something to eat, that is lunch, okay, you're also thinking about the story that you're going to write or the film you're going to make or going to church, you know, so, you, so you're satisfying your physiological needs at the same time that you're looking to satisfy your needs for self-actualization. Uh, uh, poor people, while they may be hungry, also need to belong, have a need to belong to a group. So, you know, so this hierarchy of needs, as constructed by Maslow, and as I said, that Dr. Pete, as a psychologist, should be very much aware of, and so he shouldn't be flipping around this term, hierarchy, in so flippant a manner. And, of course, you have hierarchies in social systems, and, and this is one of the things that um, uh, Marx was talking about, the hierarchies in the uh, social system of his day. So uh, here we see a modern construction of a hierarchy, social stratification. Okay, you know, the, you know, the uh, uh, lower class and then the middle class and then the upper class. Um, uh, and here divided by incomes. So you have that kind of hierarchical structure. And of course, this is much closer to the type of hierarchy that uh, Marx was talking about. In this next video, we'll see how Dr. Pete argues that all hierarchies are winner take all. And this is the crux of his critique right here at, at this moment that we're looking at, in that Marx argues that social structure is something that human societies construct. We have a choice as to what type of society we live in. Um, and Marx's argument at the time, uh, in the mid-1800s, was that the social structures prevalent in European industrial society at the time were unjust, that the poor were too poor and the rich were too rich, okay, that the, that the social conditions were oppressive to the people who are not in the 1%. Dr. Pete says, that's absolute nonsense because all hierarchies, all hierarchical structures are winner take all. So let's take a look at that. So that's our question. Is winner take all typical of all hierarchies in general or not? We'll take a look at that contention. But first, we'll look at what Dr. Pete has to say. But the idea that that's actually... History is not true because it's deeper than history. It's biology itself because organisms of all sorts organize themselves into hierarchies and one of the problems with hierarchies is that they tend to arrange themselves into a winner-take-all situation. So contrary to Dr. Pete, and it won't surprise you that I'm going contrary to Dr. Pete, um, I would argue that societies or groups can have different hierarchy of values and structure their societies 
differently. Individually or as a society, we can value things in different orders. So in a lot of ways, a hierarchy, a social structure, structure of social classes constitute a reflection of ethical values. How does a society wish to structure itself? So it's, there's not an absolute, and you can have many different types of social structures. So Dr. Pete says there's only one, and that's winner take all. But actually, if we actually look at a quick history of uh, societies, and even look at different societies today, we see that that's not true. It's just not true. Dr. Pete is, in a word, wrong. Let, let's take a quick look. Some societies are purposely organized to be egalitarian, that is, not winner-take-all. One of the first examples that we have is uh, anthropologists look back at uh, foragers and hunter-gatherers, that is very primitive, uh, simple societies in which there were no hierarchies, or sometimes only occasional hierarchies. That is, uh, if they gathered together for a ceremony, there would be a hierarchy, somebody would conduct the ceremony, and then in the morning they'd go their separate ways, hunting and gathering, hunting the antelope and gathering nuts and berries, something like that, right? Okay, so no hierarchy. Um, and there's even more complex societies that lack a winner-take-all hierarchy uh, uh, in which everyone is important. And in the ancient past, several complex societies, not just hunters and gatherers, but complex societies that had cities um, were organized along egalitarian lines, sometimes even communistic lines, what we would call communist um, societies. For instance, ancient Mesopotamia. This is in pre-biblical Middle East. Uh, there were some societies that had no obvious social structures, no obvious kings that ruled over everybody, but complex cities that kind of self-organized. Uh, as a matter of fact, the thought occurs to me now as I'm talking about this, what's another system that kind of self-organizes? Well, the Internet. We have the Internet today, in which there's no king of the Internet, um, but it self-organizes along very democratic lines. Ancient Manoa. Manoa is in the Mediterranean, just below uh, or south of uh, Greece, and it's thought to have uh, been structured along the lines of an egalitarian system that actually um, was very uh, matriarchal. Um, that is, um, women were very important in the social structure. Women, uh, it's thought, constituted priestesses, and the, uh, and the religion or the mythology of the time uh, elevated that position very high. So um, ancient Manoa is a system in which we cannot discern ruler kings. In the Valley of Mexico, uh, the ancient Aztecs in what is now Mexico City, for a long time, we think, uh, had a non-hierarchical social structure, even though they had cities in the uh, Middle Ages that were uh, as large as any city in Europe. Some Native American tribes, uh, for instance, the Iroquois in the... Uh, North uh, East were structured along egalitarian lines, and Native American tribes in the Pacific Northwest even practiced what's called potlatch. So this was a ceremony. These, these were periodic ceremonies in which rather than winner take all was just the opposite because the chief or the big man of the area would throw a celebration and then give away all his wealth. And so it was winner give all. And so the prestige of the uh, big man or the important man, the leader, was uh, increased by how much he could give away. And, and actually different leaders would um, uh, compete. Who can give away the most? Christian communities, both at the beginning of Christianity and up through the 1800s, were very 
often constructed along the lines of communes, or to use a, uh, a uh, word that Marx would approve of, communistic. And even today, not all societies are equal. Here we can see a map of uh, an estimation, an attempt to estimate uh, various societies that are either um, equal or less than equal. The uh, countries in red have less income equality than the countries in green. So, if hierarchy is always the same and always winner take all, this would not be possible. One of the ways that basing rules in a society on equality rather than the hierarchy of winner take all is something that we see in uh, several countries around the world. One example we have of a society basing its rules along principles of equality and egalitarianism rather than hierarchy of winner take all, we can see in uh, uh, structure of uh, fines, for instance, traffic fines, or fines for minor um, uh, 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 infractions of the law. Um, these are quite prevalent in Scandinavian countries like Denmark and Norway and Finland, countries like that, and also in other places around the world. And this is that the fine f or the penalty that somebody pays for something like a traffic ticket depends on how much income they make. So, uh, so it's the case in our society in America, in the United States, that sometimes a poor person or a working person can be absolutely ruined by having their car towed. You know, because not only is there the fine, but there's the towing fees and whatnot that you know, is more than they make in a single month. Along uh, the rules in a more egalitarian society, the fine is based on how much the person earns in, for instance, a day. So whereas a working person might make $100 a day, okay, uh, just an estimate, a, uh, a rich person might make $100,000 a day. So the fine is based upon how much they make. And there's a recent case in, uh, in Finland in which a uh, businessman was given a ticket for speeding. Now, normally that's a $200 fine. But in this case, it was a $100,000 fine because it was based on his income. You see, so this is a society that constructs its rules based along the principles of equality rather than say, for instance, winner take all, because, because if the fine were only $200 for the rich person, you know, th that's just pocket change. He says, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll speed anytime I want to, you know, tow my car. I don't care. Okay. But, but if the fine is adjusted to his income, then he might think twice about it. Anyway, so there's different ways to, to, to construct uh, societies and construct um, hierarchies. Now, one thing to consider is how the emphasis on winner-take-all looks from outside the system. Okay, so we're used to the winner-take-all and, you know, the rich people, you know, you know, pay pocket change for their fines and they get away w with anything. But this is a Native American, a Pomo Native American, um, Pomo uh, Indians uh, were in uh, California and commenting on white Anglo-American culture. So listen to this. This is how the winner-take-all society looks like from the outside. They wanted to take the world for themselves. They have taken everything away from the Indians and they take everything away from one another. They do not help one another when they are in trouble. And they do not care what happens to other people. We were not like that. We would not let a person die of starvation when we had plenty of food. We would not treat a stranger the way they treated their own brothers and sisters. So, again, that's a commentary on the winner-take-all system 
from the outside, from a person who's outside the mindset and the assumptions of the winner-take-all system. Now, I will say that even in American society, in the society of the United States, winner-take-all is not true. It's not even true in our culture, despite what Dr. Pete says. For instance, there's nothing more hierarchical in our society than the military, right? I mean, you know, uh, the general gives the order, everybody has to follow it, okay? But to quote a Marine general on the ethic in the military, officers eat last. That is, senior officers go to the back of the line. Junior Marines eat first. So this is important. So rather than winner take all, it's winner, that is the general, takes last after everybody else gets theirs. So contrary to what Dr. Pete says, winner take all is not axiomatic. That is not the rule in hierarchical structures. And of course, most famously in... Um, a religion, a theology, a uh, value structure held by many people in the West, many Americans and Europeans and many people uh, elsewhere around the world, is that of Christianity. And Jesus told the story of the uh, poor man. Lazarus at the gate is what the parable is called. Poor man was starving outside the mansion of a rich man. And the end of the story has it that the rich man is in hell, is burning in hell, and the poor man is seated at the right hand of Abraham. That is, you know, next to God, right? Abraham being the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, patriarch of uh, Christianity and Judaism and also Islam. Okay. So, uh, and the rich man is condemned to hell because he did not help the poor man who is at his gate, at his door, to go on. And I hate to beat this, but I'm going to beat this horse until it's... Well, no, I'm not going to beat the horse. <laughs> I'm going to beat Dr. Pete's idea. I don't want to beat any animals up. Anyway, but Dr. Pete says that winner-take-all is the rule in animal society. And this is not true. This is absolutely not true. In wolf society, for instance, wolves have packs. That's a society. Well, wolves are sh have been shown to sh be more prone to share than even dogs. We're close to dogs. We love dogs. I have a dog. Okay, But uh, wolves have a greater tendency to share than even dogs. And so we get the whole idea of the alpha wolf, the alpha male, the wolf who's leader of the pack. And, but he doesn't take all. In fact, he takes, like the general, he takes last. Bonobos, uh, they're related to the chimpanzees. And you can see from the picture that they even look like a chimpanzee, right? Uh, they're a little bit different. Well, they have a totally different social structure. They have a matriarchal social structure. The females are very important. And it's a sharing society. They will share what they have. So, again, you have hierarchies that are not winner-take-all. Even though Dr. Pete denies it, Marx was right. The conflict that Marx saw in his day between social classes, emphasize social classes, is one about what kind of hierarchy exists in society. Because you can have different types of hierarchies. Different cultures are possible. Even with different sorts of hierarchies, as we glossed over, looking at historical societies. Different hierarchies of people and different hierarchies of value. Do we have examples of winner-take-all societies? Well, a real winner-take-all society might be thought of as a slave society. Those at the top, the winners, the winners, okay, uh, take all they can and leave as little as possible for those at the bottom, the losers or the losers, uh, even to the point of starving the losers to death. 
I take so much of what you produce that you don't even have enough to feed yourself or your family. That's a real winner-take-all society. I take all. I take everything. There's some critics of modern-day society that say we're tending in that direction. With the amassing of fabulous, that is, fantastical, huge, humongous, monstrous amount of wealth in the hands of very few people. So, for instance, um, Bezos, the owner of Amazon, uh, buys a $400 million yacht that I doubt he even goes sailing on more than once a year, while his employees at Amazon, in some cases, it's been documented, are forced to pee in bottles because they don't get restroom breaks. That's a real winner-take-all society. Many other companies refuse to pay their workers uh, a living wage, enough to live on. Uh, Walmart, for instance, is notorious for um, structuring its work schedules so workers do not get full-time status. They actually have in their human resources department experts who will direct their own workers on how to get um, uh, welfare. Okay, These are winner-type uh, winner-take-all type societies. So what kind of society do we want? What kind of hierarchy of values? Is money most important? Okay, well, then a society can construct that. Uh, do you want a society uh, in which competition is the highest value and it's dog-eat-dog, dog, the rich crush the weak, okay, the powerful crush the weak? That's a type of society that you get. Now you can have a fiercely pro-business society. The business is able to do anything, able to poison your water or wreck your land. That's your choice. That's our choice as a society. Or conversely, you can have a society based upon equality. That is a choice. That's a hierarchy of values. You can have a society based upon spirituality or go even further, a theocracy, one ruled by a church, by a particular church. Of course, there's no guarantee which church that'll be, but you can have a society based upon that type of hierarchy. What's most important? Family, relationships, friends. You can have society that structures itself around these as the most important elements in a hierarchy. Is compassion most important? You can have a society which is based upon helping others. You know, sort of the old no man left behind type of philosophy. Or you can have a society based upon pleasure. <laughs> Let's all have a party. Let's all have a good time. Okay, welcome to the orgy. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't necessarily endorse that. Okay. But uh, uh, if that's your most important value in a society, then you can structure the society around that. Or is work and job most important? You know, you can have a society, and we've seen societies like this, in which people literally fall over dead at their desk because they work themselves so hard. They work 12, 14, 16, 18 hours a day and die an early death of uh, overwork. You can have society of self-denial. You can have a Puritan-type society. Okay. You can have a society that emphasizes nonviolence. Is that your highest value in the hierarchy? Well, you can have a society that emphasizes that or that endorses violence to solve problems. You can have a society like that, too. Okay. You can have a libertarian society. No laws, no rules, anything goes. <laughs> okay. Pirate ships and <laughs> anything. Okay. You can have a green society. Do we want a society that values nature, values mother nature, values the planet, the only planet we have, in spite of uh, people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk trying to escape the planet and build a new Earth on Mars, for instance? Well, you can have a society that values the Earth that we have here. 
Conversely, you can have society that doesn't care about the environment. You see, these are all hierarchical values. What's most important in this society? You can have a clothing optional society. Well, that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, or a society with a two drink minimum. And here I might be <laughs> getting a little bit silly, but you can structure your society around that. Yeah, I'll drink to that. <laughs> or one that values artistic creativity. You can have a society in which the artist is elevated to the very tippy top of society. Or that guarantees free speech, but requires that you sing your speech like a show tune. Let's just say that a winner-take-all is not axiomatic in, a, in hierarchies. That is, automatic. There are many other types of hierarchical structures that you can have. Because winner-take-all is an ethical value. It's a choice, not a fact. And reflects on the values embedded in the culture. And I'll just add this, too, that when somebody posits something like winner-take-all as an absolute fact, they're, what they're really doing is they are saying that that's their value. They're proposing that as a should, where uh, it's not an is, it's not an absolute, it's not a fact of nature, it's not a eternal truth. It's what they are arguing for. So when Dr. Pete says hierarchies involved winner take all, what he's actually doing is one, uh, he is saying this is the way that it should be. And implicit in that is his belief that he is somehow one of the winners. Okay. That he is on top of that pyramid. Okay. He is one with the winners. Okay, so be careful of that. Always be careful of something like that. So, but in the end, when Dr. Pete says it can't be any other way, remember that he is tragically, ludicrously, ridiculously, stupidly, foolishly wrong. Skillshare is for designers, photographers, marketers, artists, and lifelong learners. Skillshare is for foodies, commuters, risk takers, the young, and the young at heart. It's for strategists, free spirits, purists, the bold, the curious, the characters, the makers, and the breakers. Skillshare is for everyone, an online learning community with thousands of classes to advance your career, improve the world, and pursue the work you love. What will you learn next? It all starts on Skillshare.